as milling progresses, I keep finding ways to make my life a lot easier. For example, this is a long post. It needs to be 18 and a half feet when it's all done, so I've cut this log at 20 feet. If you think about it, that little eight foot section of log, if I have to cut this log eight times, that's 64 feet of milling that I don't have to do. That makes me really happy. It's Saturday morning. We had a very cold night, so everything's all frosted up, but the sun is out and the clouds are just amazing. I don't know, these clouds are freaking cool. So today, we're working on milling again, but Alyssa is gonna shift gears a little bit and take a short break from video and uh, help me focus. She worked until almost nine o'clock last night by headlamp and by work light getting things moved around so we can start staging the timbers for the workshop. She actually did a really cool design <clears throat> using software to lay out the timbers and figure out the most optimal layout uh, for the workshop. So we have room for all the timbers underneath tents that we'll be renting and then also uh, have room for everybody to work. It'll be challenging because we have 24 people who are students, I think, and then we've got the shelter staff, Alyssa and I, and I have some family members coming and volunteers helping. So it's going to be a very busy area. I want to make sure we do that right. And uh, <laughs> as big as this little piece of property is that we're working on right here, we seem to run out of room. But it's because we're trying to basically run an entire sawmill, build a house, stockpile materials, you know. All right, so I'm gonna work on that. I think today Alyssa's gonna kinda take the camera a little bit and show you guys some of the other stuff that she's working on, give you a break from milling. We have a lot of cleanup that needs to be done today. So I started last night after it was too dark to film for the sawmill. I actually came over here and got the a uh, bunch of these mill ends all cut up. So Alyssa's gonna start stacking that this morning. I'm really happy we got our little saw back from the shop. I just took it in, I don't have time to deal with it. It was tuned for where my sister lives, which is about 6,000 feet elevation, 5,000 feet, something like that. And uh, it didn't run that great here. It's a great little saw, and it's way easier to run day to day than that 660. That 660 is heavy. It's a nice saw, but man, it's it gets heavy after a few hours. So I've got that saw back and it's running amazing. They threw a new bar on it. That bar was getting to be dodgy at best. So today's looking pretty good. Hopefully we'll get a lot of work done, get some of these long posts cut. I've challenged myself. I've got two days to do it to get through that log pile. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I'm hoping to get our logger to deliver logs for us Monday morning and bring me some of the monster logs so I can get working on our tie beams. And that'll really, I think in my mind, that's the hump I need to get over in order to be kind of on the downhill toward the workshop. The rafters aren't gonna be easy either because they're so long, but their dimensions are very tolerable, six by 12. So even like this log right here, a six by 12 would have been no problem to get out of this log. I'll share a couple of things this morning, just uh, lessons I've learned. Kind of came up with a strategy. My, my blade strategy has been one blade per log. We have about 16 logs or there was something that was about 18 in the deck. And one blade per log on something this critical is really no big deal. The blades are 15 bucks to sharpen them is five. When you're making beams that are worth $700, the blade's the cheap part, right? So if I change my blade right before I make my final dimension cuts on my beam, the cuts are just amazing. And then I leave that blade on and when I put the next log up and I make all my rough cuts. And then right before I start cutting this timber to dimension, I'll change out my blade. And that seems to be working really well because I get those last butter smooth cuts and I think that's really gonna help Alyssa with planing and keeping things to be, you know, really getting the timbers to look super nice. The other thing I thought I would share, I wanted to test these before I gave any feedback. These are the Duluth Briar Pants. So they've got a really strong like duck cloth type base that, that they're made from and then they're overstitched with this, I don't even know what it is, it's a really tightly woven synthetic material. I don't think it's their fire hose material, but it could be. Well, I wanted to share my thoughts. I will say these pants are durable. These are clean, I just washed them. They looked about like this after four days on the job, running around, crawling in the sawdust, bucking up firewood, and they really do withstand this type of work. 
Um, granted, I'm not running through any briars, but in a nutshell, basically, they've got double knee on them, so they're strong and durable. I only have one feedback for Duluth. They're not flexible. <laughs> You can't move. They have the same problem that I have with a lot of Carhartt's uh, duck cloth. They're not, they have no flex to them at all. When I'm working in them, I can't even lift my leg up here on this log. I can't get over this log on the mill. I have to go around. If you remember from our earlier Duluth video, clothing video, one of the things that I love, 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 love about their flex fire hose pants is the flex. I feel like, especially with the sawmill, you have to be nimble to work this thing. You spend a lot of time down on the ground adjusting legs, jacking up logs, measuring things. You spend a lot of time on this side of the mill, this side of the mill, this side of the mill, this side of the mill. You're always like getting all of the way around this thing. And to me, agility and mobility are vital for a piece of clothing. If I can't move, I might as well just put a straight jacket on. I think that's something that I wanted to share about those briar pants. I feel like they're very, very durable, but I don't think they're flexible enough. So I don't know if Duluth can do something about that. I don't know if that's some feedback that's helpful for their product, but if you're watching this, if you can find a way to make those pants more flexible, I think you got a winner. Otherwise, I'm back to wearing my Flex Fire Hose pants. They're just as durable, but they don't have that extra layer of kind of briar cloth, you know, that the thorns and things wouldn't get through. So you get poked once in a while. But I'll, I'll, take the, I'll take those pokes over mobility any day. That's a lot, lot of dang firewood. If anyone wants to know how to get a good glute workout, this is it. My challenge with all this is to try to carry more on my left side. I think my right side has become Hulk status and my left side's still a little fragile weakling. Rah! Today, what, the 13th of October? We're probably not gonna get a video out. Jesse and I talked about how if we get in a pinch, video's the first thing to go. While we enjoy sharing our daily journey with you guys, we're gonna continue to do a daily video, but we can't simply publish a video a day and get the house built during crunch time. So today we make the hard decision of letting video go. I'm already getting caught. Thing we don't share a lot about is what life looks like between work. Here's what our RV looks like right now. It's an absolute mess. Well, not really. We just have no space. So we did laundry yesterday. Jesse has seven clean shirts to wear now. I think I'm going to order him a few more today. Our Sony came back from the Sony hospital. If you remember, it had a big crack on the screen. So you Looking at our footage was pretty annoying. This one that I'm filming on now actually has a crack too, so we thought we'd see how the repair process went. And assuming it goes well, this one is gonna be shipped to the hospital on Monday. Okay, 118 bucks. Stick a SD card in there. Better make sure nothing's on it. Here's how we start every single morning. We use our free project management software called Asana. And we have a list of our life, of all the things we have to do. So as you can see this morning, my task is to pick up firewood, which I've done some of, uh, filter the hot tub, order more t-shirts and flannels for Jesse, um, because we could either do laundry or we could just buy more clothes and I'm all about the new clothing. We have to clear out a spot for all of our timbers. We have to tarp our roof etc. And we add like 20 things to this list a day and we check about 10 of them off. Looks like our SD card is clear. Zoink! 
so next I think we got to test this baby out and check the footage just to make sure all is well before we shoot an entire day on it and here we are can you tell that the scratch is gone although the lens might be a little foggy and next even though there's a lot of work to be done I have to keep us fed and I'm pretty hungry and I can tell once I start doing firewood I'm not gonna want to stop we are not slobs, that is not even one day old, that's just, we don't want to dump all this crap down our RV, so unfortunately all this like fat and grease and coffee grounds and vomitous Maximus sits in here until we can dump it out. Breakfast. Cut off the belly buttons, cause I don't like belly buttons, they're bad texture. Jesse thinks I'm silly. Challenging as it is to keep the RV clean, it's always in our best interest to do so, even when we don't have time, because when we're done working, we get to come home to a clean house. Hold down the fort, okay? Usually I set breakfast for Jesse right about here and in about some time between 20 minutes and 3 hours the bowl will appear back in the RV empty. <laughs> a tip on the easy sharpener so first things first you got to make sure you got the right one oh so this is, is point right three two five which is the correct one yay for the what we need to do is put a paint dot on this one. yep for the 660 it's three eighths pitch gotcha okay um so there's an arrow on here which shows you the, the direction, direction you sharpen in. the picture of the saw ah. so if you're sitting at the saw looking down at it okay. your saw should be going this direction huh. And you're... And you sharpen away from you? Yes. Okay.
We went hot tubbing last night and it was amazing. I'm a little concerned there's no smoke coming out of the chimney, so I think the fire I lit didn't go. No. Ah, oh, that's where last night's dinner ended up. You thought this was a sawmill. One thing's for sure, this thing makes a lot of sawdust, yeah. a lot of firewood, a lot of lumber, a lot of scraps, and a few beams. Just a few. Just yep. enough to make a timber frame. Yep. <laughs> Job security. be very wise to order more anchor seal pronto because for one of our loads of trees out of three we went through a gallon so logic says we probably need two more gallons This is number six and seven for the day. That's pretty good. We're above our average. Here's my theory. Okay. <laughs> if we do dinner late, like eight o'clock late, no work after. No, you can't. Even if we do dinner at seven or six, yep. we get home late enough that we don't want to work. Yep. But if we eat at like five and we're home by 6.30, we can get a few solid hours of work in. Yeah. It gives us a little bit of rest. It's when yeah. you don't rest and you just work and work and work and work. There's no, there's no gas in the tank when you get off. I don't feel hungry, but knowing I haven't eaten anything since nine, yeah, probably means that energy's a little low. Yeah, we're a, we're sort of kind of a two meal a day kind of. Oh meal, yeah. But the problem is that about 14 hours, like ain't gonna perfect world. My perfect kitchen. world, I'd eat breakfast at around nine or 10 a.m. Yep. and dinner around five. So anchor seal all over my what, gloves. Like an hour from dinner, or um, are we at dinner right now? Maybe now, like we're definitely. Maybe you can help me get the tarp on the house. Okay. I don't know. It's a good stopping point. I yep. Mean, I can keep milling, but I don't know what time it is. We can mill till about 5:30. That's. Yeah. the 30 piece mark Woo. 
vlog do you want? Uh, this the one. top one? Yeah, okay. I want to pull it off and then I'll uh, pull yep, that yep. orange line. And uh, I'm hoping I can get a long post out of that. And if I do, Hallelujah. all of our long posts. Really? Don't hit too hard. <laughs> My hands are cold. <laughs> if we get all that done by Monday, maybe we can take a day off. Not. Well, we <laughs> not. may have to because we may not get logs. That won't be a day off, it'll be planing well, and stuff. Well, it'll be a but... day doing something else, but yeah. it'll be a little less. We'll have time to rest. Just hold this right here. Okay. Yeah, there you go, just hold tension. Okay. Stand out of the way. Whoa. Watch out. Good. Sorry, firewood pile. Ooh. Now that's what I'm talking about. Turtle says 92 degrees, and I would argue with that. I think it's a little cooler. I think that was the temperature on the surface. So I think tonight she will be ready for us to take a quick dip, even if it's only for 20 minutes like we did last night. on the agenda. Hmm. Ahoy. So, we got the problem. Even though our subfloor is down, it's not watertight, so our garage is getting leaked on constantly. And for the timber frame workshop, we really want to make sure that everyone has a dry place to retreat to if it's raining. Because there are no tarps to fit a 36 by 36 building locally, we resorted to buying one off Amazon. It's 40 by 40, so we should have about a four foot uh, overlap. So I'm going to try to get this installed and see if I can kind of weight it down a little bit. Now the question is, how the heck do we keep this from going anywhere? There you go! We decided that we're going to have two sections of our timbers for the workshop and we're going to have two 20 by 40 tents. There's definitely 40 feet in here by 20 that we can use, however, this stuff's going to have to go, the outhouse is going to be moved yonder, and it's gonna get a friend. There our other section is over here where we're currently stacking the timbers. So basically what we wanna do is we want to plane them, which we think we'll do in here, but we might start doing it outside. And then we wanna place them in the final position. So we actually need to free up this area and that area. I've been doing a little bit of cleanup in here, trying to get some of our scraps and send them elsewhere. But one of the major things we have to do is move all of this lumber. Remember, we had quite the lumber pile right here, but last night I was really feeling the urge to be productive, so by LED light I moved this lumber over here. 
And this looks amazing. That's a really good spot for it. We're gonna have to dig right here to put our uh, line in to the septic tank from the house and that should not be in the way. However, there's not room for all the longer lumber right here. So we're thinking we're gonna put the longer stuff in front of our RV garage. Yes, we're gonna have to move it later to get the RV out, but believe it or not, on this five acre property, we're running out of space. But don't worry, our space will be freed up again in no time. So I, we might do that by headlamp and then we can work on planing. Is this nightly cleanup? Yeah. Can you, uh, can you sweep off that lumber right there? There's actually yes. two boards sitting on top of yep. it. Yep. Not necessarily tonight, but it's a good idea to blow off the chainsaws before you put them away. Okay. So it'll be fine for tomorrow. Okay. Good job today, first of all. Yeah, I feel like we hustled. This girl. I'm pretty sure cut and stacked probably close to two cord, maybe three cord of wood. And there's a whole nother it's not bad. and a whole mountain. nother mountain over there, probably three Ugh. quarters of a cord over there. And I just made more for you, so <laughs> keep you busy. Wow. The good news is yep. this log had a secret floor joist mm. in it. It was hiding in its butt. Ooh. It had a floor <laughs> joist in its butt. <laughs> so the good news is that is the last long post nice done that's awesome boom that's worth celebrating 20 footer right there the last one the bad news is it's eight and an eighth on one side so you got to be really careful okay. planing it I will. but i was careful sawing it so hopefully you're yep good. i had to do that to get that floor joist so down there is a floor joist that means today is a record that wow seven pieces. i think we might have to get a margarita at mexican food that's yep that's seven, and i might not be joking this time seven pieces in one day wow good job the only reason that happens because you were sawing thank you yeah because <laughs> otherwise i'd have to deal with fire yeah I, that probably. took me three hours that's what i'm realizing is that there's so much peripheral busyness that happens yeah there is that i can't mill i end up cutting firewood moving logs stacking this cleaning that and none of that's milling so yeah, I th I'm pretty sure I could keep one person buried to their eyeballs in peripheral yeah. work. I still didn't do what I wanted to do, but hopefully, no. I don't know. Cool. <sighs> I don't know, there's so much I want to say, but not yes. on camera, so. That's worth celebrating. Yeah, All right. so we're done. We're not done, okay. we're gonna go eat and then we're gonna see where we're at with yep. planning and, and stuff. we got more work to do by work lights. Yep. I'm so hungry. My hungry kicked in about an hour ago, just crazy I've hard. I've been hungry for a while, but I really, really, wanted that post sitting yep. on the mill. I think that's good. That's a huge success. Gotta make sure Grumpy over here is on its night switch. <laughs> Not that it seems to help much. I really think that it's cold-blooded, but that doesn't explain why it wouldn't start back when it was mm. hotter than heck. 